Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Two Spool for School podcast. I'm Lo, and if we've met before, hi again. And if we haven't, then welcome to this space. Uh, this is a general crafting podcast uh, focusing on knitting, spinning, sewing, dyeing, macrame now, every, all sorts of shit. Uh, so, um,. My puppies are coming to say hi. Let's see if I can get any of them in the shot to formally introduce you since I was unable to before. This is Luca. She's our beagle and she's as sweet as pie. And she says hi. And she'll be my co-host. And then Jasper is our basinji. He's down on the floor and he doesn't take kindly to being held um, or... <laughs> much of anything uh he's whoa buddies watch 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 those tails yeah i know you're excited all right <laughs> are we cool are we cool is it treat time it's not you're gonna have to chill all right so um where was i going with this um my name is lo and uh i can be found on the internet as crayon disaster on uh, Ravelry and Crayon Disaster Knits on Instagram. Oh, and I forgot to tell you last time. No. Beagle, can you not? No. We're doing it with you in my arms then. All right. Um, my textilia. So um, a lot of people I don't think know about textilia, but it's like a Ravelry for sewing. So I'm super into it. Um, and if you ever want to see someone who is obsessive about keeping track of uh, yarn and fabric and their projects and everything, uh, you should check out my Ravelry and my Textilia, because that's where I am. Um, all right. Well, I was going to tell you about what I'm wearing today. Um, so if little Miss Luca Bear will uh, oblige me, I'm going to get up and show you. All right. There you go, girl. Watch that tail. All right, so this is um, the Stiora. So this is a top I made a few years back. So we had an unseasonably cool day today here in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, where I'm coming to you from. Ooh. And Ooh. 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 Alright, you know, if you don't have to bribe your dog with treats to be quiet while you make a podcast, do you even really own dogs, you know? Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> this is the Stiora um, by Yulin Marak, um, and it was in the Nitty Spring Summer tw 2016. Um, and the really interesting part about it is this back lace panel that I'm hoping you can see. Whew. And this is made out of Malabrigo lace in the color Pagoda. And this is really great because I went to Chicago, bought two skeins of this, not really knowing what to do. That's back when I was really into doing lace shawls. And um, I was able to make a little top out of it. I used almost all of the um, 250 gram balls, 96 grams, I believe. And yeah, got a cute little light summer top and it's just barely cool enough to have wool against my skin here in North Carolina. Uh, speaking of North Carolina, I'm going to be opening up a beer because we are filming later than we did um, last time I filmed. And this is a New Belgium Lime Light. And it's fine. It'll do the job. Cheers. All right. What have I been up to? So I missed last I was gonna film last week but we had some friends in town and they stay this room is my craft room and guest room so they were staying here it'd be super weird for me to be like get out I'm filming a podcast <laughs> so um just put it off a week and actually this will be a better schedule for me going forward so let's talk about my finished objects so I didn't have a ton of time for knitting this past three weeks because I actually took some time off work and when I'm not sitting at my desk I just don't pick up my knitting quite as much. So, but I got a bunch of stuff to show you like do not worry I am feeling chatty and I have got stuff. So this is gonna be a long one. So 
the first thing that I am going to show off is a new craft, new craft alert! So, this is a macrame wall hanging. And it's the first one I've ever done! Woo! Um, this was really fun. Um, so I followed a YouTube tutorial from Macrame Princess. Um, and I will link that below. And um, the cord that I used was the one I showed as a <coughs> acquisition last week. Um, and it was Neroma, Neroma? I believe that's how you pronounce that. Um, five millimeter cotton cord um, in this colorway. Oh, what was it? It was something very like honeydew or something like that. I did not think this looked like that, but I don't have it in my notes. <laughs> I'll put it on the screen. Um, so yeah, uh, I have a video of me failing to figure out macrame in real time that I'm sure I will put some, nope, nope, remember we're going this way. I will put some uh, clips over here um, showing you me just absolute fail, absolutely failing at uh, how to do, how to hold macrame uh, while you're working on it. Um, Cause that's completely new to me. Uh, but finally figured it out, uh, got it done, and it was a quick little little project. Just finished, uh, banged it out yesterday. Really fun. Uh, I want to do more of them. I want my whole house to just look like the '70s threw up and macrame everywhere. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna be doing that. Uh, grabbing some more cord. Um, if anyone knows of any good places to get macrame cord, because um, the, my craft store has a lot of it, but I kind of want to see what's out there and price wise, um, and see what I can get. So if you have any good, uh, places you get it, any, or you know any, um, leave it down in the comments below. All right. So that was my first FO. So I got a ton of sewing done last week. So I have, I had some time off for when my friends were coming in and, uh, we were going to a wedding. Um, and so I, one, wanted to make a dress for the wedding and I wanted to make something fun for when my friends got in town. So the first thing that I finished up sewing is this. Oh, stand up, hold it back here so you can see it. Please don't mind all of the, uh, loose interfacing I'll, I'll tell you the story about that in a little bit but yeah it's just a little tiny uh shift dress um very 60s inspired i want it i got these little so this pattern is super super easy the name of the pattern is the wear everywhere dress and it's from so so easy like i said it was pretty easy <laughs> um it's literally just the the front and the back are cut out of one well, one piece each. So uh, sleeves are included. And then there's a facing for the, the neckline. So this is where things went wrong a little bit for me. So um, I have had uh, some issues in the past uh, doing facings in knit fabric. Uh, here I am many, many more, I would say two more years into my garment sewing uh, life. I thought it would be easier and I still failed. Um, <laughs> I realized, at least this time I realized my problem. I did not stay stitch the neckline and in not doing that it really bagged out and wanted to flop outward, um, which was a huge pain in the ass. Um, so I, when I was wearing it to the wedding I ended up um, using some garment tape just to kind of keep it pressed to my chest. Um, so I tried yeah, I tried interfacing the crap out of it, but I guess once it's the damage is done, it's done. There's not really much you can do about it. I'm thinking, I talked to my friend um, uh, Amy, who's a seamstress, um, and she said maybe put a, a gathering stitch around the neckline, just a really, really light one, just to kind of keep everything, get it back to the, the shape it should be. So I'll, I'll give that a try. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty easy project. Um, I would definitely make it again. Uh, yeah, uh, what did, oh, I haven't told you about, like, the fabric or anything, you know, why not? <laughs> so the fabric was a, um, Mod Flower Drops Modal Spandex Blend, um, and I got it from Fabric Mark, fa fa 
Fabric Mart Fabrics. Um, this is one of my favorite websites for um, fabrics because it is cheap as hell. Um, I definitely recommend checking it. Their stock changes all the time. And yeah, I've gotten some pretty good stuff from there. Um, so I, for the, uh, I did a few modifications in the, uh, the pattern. So I wanted it to be very 60s, so I wanted to take that hem up. So in the cutting of the fabric, I took three, no, four inches up on the, on the pattern. And then when I got it all assembled, I realized I still wanted it a little higher. So I took another three and a half inches off the hem. And that actually worked out really great because I made a little headband with that. It went really well with the dress. Um, I will be inserting pictures of me wearing said dress right here. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with that project. And yeah, so I made the size. There we go. Um, I made a th the size 38 inch bust, which I think was the size five. Um, I have a 44 inch bust so that gave me six inches of negative ease. So what I've learned in sewing with knits is that you really got to go with that negative ease. Um, when I first started, I was making things, you know, for no ease and I was swimming in them. So, uh, so yeah, six inches of negative ease. Um, it's definitely form fitting, but it looked really good. I had to wear, I had to wear uh, shapewear, but I wasn't mad about it. <laughs> All right. So my next FO is another sewing FO. And this is the South Shore Romper. Ta-da! So this is just a little romper, little shorts. It's got pockets. And I am just so pleased as punch with myself about my... Uh, my pattern matching. So if you'll see, I'll bring it in, give you some close-ups of those beautiful seams and some not so beautiful ones, but you know. So here we go. We've got stripes and there, oh, I know which way I'm going. Okay. Stripes, uh, matching up. Yep, 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 yep. Look at that. All the way down. And then the sleeve right into the top. And the sides. Ooh, I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, so the only place I wasn't able to match the stripes was right here. And that was because I was about an inch short of fabric. See, you can see how it like almost, almost matches. I was just an inch short on the fabric to be able to uh, match up those stripes. Eh, what are you gonna do, you know? So that pattern is South Shore Romper by Ellie and Mac Patterns. Um, let's see, the fabric is a pastel gradient uh, ombre stripe from Girl Charlie, another one of my favorite um, fabric suppliers. Uh, and let's see, what modifications did I do on this? So I did the, I made the size extra large, which is for bust size of 40 to 42 and a half. And like I said before, I'm a 44 inch bust, so that's about four to two inches of negative ease, depending on what part of the scale you're looking at. Um, and I uh, adjusted uh, the length of the bodice. So the bodice is drafted for an H eight inch torso and I have an 11 inch torso. So I added three inches in there. And the only thing I would change if I'm doing it again is the crotch um, of the romper sits a little bit low. So I would maybe take maybe like a half inch um, in the rise up just a little bit. Um, and yeah, it's really, really a fun uh, piece to wear. Um, I have uh, all this footage of me making uh, the pattern that I will probably insert here or maybe before or after the video. Um, I sped it up. It's still like 22 minutes long. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, But it's really cool to see it come together in 600%, you know, time. Um, so uh, the only thing I really messed up on this one is as I was putting it together, I realized I forgot to put pockets in on one side. So I had to rip the seam up uh, on one side of it, insert those pockets and then piece it back together. No big deal. Easy peasy. Um, and yeah, that, that was it. So that's it for that one. Um, so 
the, the <laughs> what happened was it's tour de fleece right Woo! tour de fleece it snuck up on me so it hit Ju july 1st and i went oh fuck ah uh, i'm not ready <laughs> so i still had my sock spin that i was going on um on my wheel so i finished it so here is the sock spin and this was a let's hide my face a south down from hilltop cloud and um i did this in a fractal three ply, ply and so it came out to be a fingering weight and what are my my deets all right we got 115 grams for 467 yards so that's like spot on that's exactly what i wanted and uh yeah that gives me a grist of 1840 um grams per no yards per pound um so yeah super super happy with this um took a lot longer than I thought it would to get off my wheel. So I'm glad uh, that I had Tour de Fleece to kind of push me along. Um, so yeah, so once I got this off my wheel, I could get into what I really like to do during Tour de Fleece. So I started this last year and what I like to do is I like to take this book, The Spinner's uh, Book of Yarn Designs by Sarah Anderson. I like to go through it and pick out five or six um, yarn uh, types that I have not tried before and just play. So last year, I've got what I did made last year. So last year was my first year making a, uh, boucle. So this is that. This is, this was so much fun. Um, and this is what kind of really got me, um, saying that this is what I'd like to do with Tour de Fleece every year. So we got the boucle. Um, I did a, uh, cabled yarn. This is out of Azorpless. Um, I ended up making some mittens out of this. Um, this was really fun. This was also from Hilltop Cloud. Um, this is a spiral ply with a gold thread. Um, so the base fiber of this was a Wool of the Andes roving from Knit Picks. Um, and then I did this funky little art yarn guy. So Tour de Fleece is my favorite time to do these funky little art yarn guys. This is just a mix of a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah. And then this one, which, oh, no, there's one more. So this was a, a fat single. So last year I was really um, pushing myself to spin thicker. Um, because I noticed that it's something that I kind of like lost my ability to do. Um, and this was a Three Waters Farm uh, top of the month club. Top of the month to you. <laughs> um, and it was called Red Plaid and Denim. And so I ended up making a necktie uh, for my partner out of this. Um, here you go, you can come up if you want. Um, and then the last thing I did was this, uh, bubble crepe and this was also just so much fun. So I got two of these skeins, um, because I actually, um, submitted one of these to the state fair last year, the North Carolina state fair. And, uh, this got a blue ribbon for novelty yarns. So that, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so this year. Yeah, you can hang out with all my stuff. That's cool. <laughs> so this year I picked five um, from this book. So I'm going to show you. The first one that I started was this Slub Wool Boucle. So you'll see. Um, I thought that that would be pretty fun. Really different. Just these big fat slubs and then doing that double ply or that ply and the binding and so if I can find my skein I this is what came out of that so 
if I can get it all straightened. There we go. So this is my slub wool boucle. Um, really, really fun. Uh, this was um, also Three Waters Farm um, from their top of the club, top of the month club. <laughs> and it was um, October 2021. Uh, I forgot. Oh, it was called Fall Invitation and it's a BFL. Um, so I have this, I think it's right up there. Yeah. This silk thread that a friend um, gave me. Um, and this works so well for uh, doing boucles or thread plies, things like that. It is a uh, Habu Textiles and it is 100% silk. Uh, yeah, that's all it says about it. Um, but yeah. Is really really good for that so I use that for the ply and the binder and I got um, 30 yards for 65 grams so yeah this is gonna be fun to weave with um, yeah I steamed it this morning to kind of uh, even out some of the twist uh, which worked really well my steamer got quite a, a workout this morning that's for sure um, I steamed that uh, macrame, uh, the fringe at the bottom to get it to lay flatter. Um, that worked like gangbusters and uh, yeah, those art yarns. Um, so that was the first one. So that was our slub boucle. So the next one on my list was, nope, went the wrong way. An opposing ply yarn. So I've never done an opposing ply yarn and I wanted to uh, make it even uh, more fun for myself and I did an opposing ply pigtail yarn. So it looks like that. So I think anyone who's spun has accidentally put a pig pigtail in their yarn um, but this time you know trying to do it on purpose. So, so I took that same fall invitation um, cause I'd split the braid in two, um, and I took some leftover, um, wool of the Andes roving in indigo, and the wool of the Andes was my core yarn, so it was the fatter single, and then I did the S-twist single in the fall invitation, and this is the guy that I ended up with! Look at him! Oh my god! I am, I, I like don't even know what to do with this yarn. It's so, like, so before I was a spinner, I would have looked at this and been like, this is a silly yarn. I can't do anything with it, you know. But now that I'm spinning, like, this is the kind of shit I want to make. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's just fucking cool. <laughs> like, look at it. <laughs> um, so I'll get you some real close-ups of these little pigtails because they're wacky. Um... Yeah, but so I think it's going to end up in a weaving. Um, that's what makes sense to me. Um, I've got this little um, little loom that is in the shape of North Carolina. And um, so these colors, for some reason, really sing North Carolina to me. Um, so I think they're definitely going to be a major part of it. Um, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Hey, you want to, you can't take over the podcast. Let me give y'all a little look at what I'm trying to deal with right now. There's my buddy. Look up. Yeah. Hey, hey, Jasper. What's going on? All right. But if you could. Am I still in frame? Nope. No, I'm not. <clears throat> You're really super in my way. I'm just gonna sit over you. All right. <laughs> he didn't like that. Um, yeah. Uh, so, what were my? What did I get out of that? I got 89 grams and 54 yards. So you know, nothing really usable when you think of like knitting. But 
it's gonna be perfect for you know small weavings and doing a what do they call that when you supplement supplemental weft or something like that something cool I don't know we'll figure it out all right so those are all my FOs um, so now let's get into whips so we'll keep it going with the tour de fleece train I'll tell you the rest of my plans for tour de fleece um, one that's in progress and the other one or two I can't remember that will be coming up so I will show you where's the actual um, I'll show you all these all right so so what I'm doing now is an energized singles so we're energized singles so this is where you put um, a ton of uh, twist into your singles um, and then you do a thing called sizing um, which I've never done um, where essentially you take some kind of thickener like gelatin or um, I think this says xanthan gum um, which I've bought for dyeing before and you take your curly cued pigtailed yarn after it comes off of the wheel um, and you uh, put that mixture on it and you weigh it down when it dries so it essentially you're forcing it into a straight form that you can use so you can knit or weave with um, and then whenever you wash your finished project all that um, twist is released and it goes so my plan is to weave a collapsed weave scarf with this yarn that I haven't even shown you yet but I will in a second and this is what I'm working on so I have um, two wheels so let me show you this is my my main driver this is my Ashford Traveler She's uh, fantastic. I learned on her. Uh, not exactly this one, but I, an Ashford Traveler double treadle um, at the NC State Craft, uh, craft NC State Craft Center, um, and they do all sorts of craft classes. Um, I took spinning there. I've taken wood shop uh, classes, multiple uh, wood turning. Uh, table making um they do pottery and ceramics those are the same thing um, they do lapidary um hand lettering just photography just anything you could think of um basically everything i want to do ever just do that all day so i learned on one of these guys um and then our local um yarn festival had a um yarn sale day so right after I learned, like literally right after I took the spinning class, I went to that yard sale day, found this guy, picked him up, and uh, yeah, he's been my daily driver. So uh, that's my main man, my main squeeze. And then I got this little, little baby. And this is my um, electric eel wheel nano. So I got the purple one. Um, and this is the energized single that I'm working on. So if I can get it to focus, mm. maybe, there we go. Um, so I can actually show you the braid I'm working on with it. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a Merino and Sari Silk uh, blend from Spotted Circus. So. Um, I saw Spotted Circus at SAF last year, and they were probably one of my favorite vendors. Um, I bought a bunch of stuff from them, and uh, anything I've shown you before? Probably, but I can't think of it right now. Um, oh, the yarn that's in my spring blossom socks that I'll show you. That was from Spotted Circus as well. So uh, I think they're mostly an alpaca and llama um farm but this is merino and si sari silk and this has been really really fun so i've been spinning this up while watching the new um 
Umbrella Academy. Uh, this basically, I've been going nuts with the spinning. As you can tell, I mean, I've got quite a few finished objects. Um, and eventually I was like, um, my feet are tired, but I don't want to stop spinning. So that's why I busted out the Nano and I thought it would be really good because I can get it to spin really quickly. I mean, not that I treadle really quickly in general, um, but I was like, I can get it to, I'm doing energized singles. I want it to be over twisted. Um, so let's turn the gas up to 11 and just fucking go, you know? So, um, I'm a little concerned that I may be twisting too much. Um, I've never done this. I'm not sure what the level of twist really should be. So this is a learning experience. We'll see where it goes. Um, but yeah, really fun. I love the colors on this. So the sari silk, I, I, so I didn't even realize until I started spinning it. That it's really, really these fun little pops. Um, you can see one like right here. So they get these big chunks and so they just come out and, uh, yeah, I'm kind of leaving them as not super big clumps, but I'm letting them do their thing. Um, mostly because it's going so fast that it's a little too hard for me to like really, <laughs> uh, draft it out, but it is, yeah, it's been going well. So, um, the last two yarns that I plan to make for Tour de Fleece are this cloud yarn. So this is a soft core yarn where you use a mohair um, commercial yarn and then mohair locks. And so what I've got is, where are my mohair locks? Where'd I put them? Uh, they have escaped. But I do have my core that I'm going to use. This is my core, and it is just a Drops Kid Silk uh, mohair. So that'll be what I'm spinning around. I have some locks up here. I don't know if I'm going to use these or my other ones. Um, these ones are Tease Water, so I may hold this back from something else. Um, but again, Spotted Circus. <laughs> This is the Spotted Circus uh, advertising <laughs> podcast. Not sponsored, just like them. Um, but these are really fun. So, so yeah. Um, so that'll be the soft core yarn. And then the last one that I'm probably saving for last because I'm a little bit intimidated by is... A super coil. So um, this involves, um, you can kind of see, nope, over here, um, what it ends up looking like. Uh, this involves running a spindle um, at the same time as plying. Um, so I am more than a little bit intimidated by it. Uh, hoping that I don't end up with a huge mess, but we'll see. So yeah, that's my Tour de Fleece um, plans. So uh, it is only July 11th, um, and I think the tour goes till the 26th or 27th. So I am way ahead of schedule, so I may need to add some more um, yarns from this book in, which I'm not mad about, um, or I may just start on a bigger project. So, uh, we'll see. But anyway, that is that. So, all right. Now we actually get into, like, some knitting stuff. No, that's a lie. It's crochet. <laughs> but more yarn. Not that spinning's not yarn crafts, but, you know, this is, like, the meat and potatoes of it, right? So, um, my very nearly uh, finished object is these roller skate toe stops. So um, my friend just got a pair of roller skates um, and they are leopard print. <laughs> they look like googly eyes. Nope. There we go. Anyway. <laughs> so um, she just got a pair of uh, leopard print roller skates. 
um, and they didn't come with uh, toe guards. So I said, I've, I've crocheted a pair uh, for my first pair of skates. I said I'd be happy to crochet her up a pair and her um, joking said, well, can you make them leopard print thinking that there's no way I could do that. And I said, of course I can. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I crocheted these out of uh, Karen Simply Soft, which is kind of my go-to for little tiny gifts and honestly crochet. Um, like Emma, because this feels like Emma Gurumi style, because you're doing a really tight uh, single crochet until you get to these like loopy things where the toe stop and the um, laces go. So, um, so yeah, just did the normal uh, one color. So the pattern is just called a roller skate toe guards, and it's by Julie King. And uh, so this color is sand. This color is chocolate. And then the black uh, sparkly, which I can't, I don't know if you can tell, it's sparkly, is an Isaac Mizrahi Carlisle yarn. Super discontinued. It's been in my stash forever. Um, but I thought the little pop of gold in the black would be nice. So, yeah. Um, all I got to do is uh, do the embroidery on this one and uh, give that to her next week. So that's that. Um, oh, I totally forgot to tell you about another one of FOs I had, is another crocheting FO, and I do not have it with me, so that might be why I forgot it, but I will insert uh, photos here, and it is a Wingspan Nest, so it is for the, uh, the game, the board game, Wingspan, uh, made by Elizabeth Hargrave, so the, the net, um, the game is about birds. And so uh, one of the components of the game are these little eggs. And so my uh, friend that we board game with on a regular basis asked if I could make one of these for him. And it's a little nest that holds all the eggs. And so when you're not using the game and it has a little drawstring, you can pull it, um, keep those eggs safe and sound. And then when you are playing the game, you open it up, fold the sides down, and it becomes a little nest. So uh, really cute, also basically like a little amigurumi project. Um, I also crocheted this out of the Karen Simply Soft in chocolate. Um, and what else do I have to say about that? Mm. Oh, the, uh, the pattern is by Nina Van Heck. So uh, yeah, it was a great little, little thing. I think I'm gonna make, I have the game too, so I think I might end up making another one for myself. Um, yeah. All right, back to works in progress. So I actually put some of my works in progress in bags, but they're not exciting. They're the, these are my favorite bags. These uh, organza um, bags from Wool Warehouse. They just send you for free. And I think what I love about them is that you can just see through them and uh, know exactly what's in there. So I am going to flash this real quick, but it has gotten literally no love. So I'm still in the middle of a row, just like I was last time. And uh, this is my, show you the front of it. Had this problem last time too, didn't I? All right. So this is my uh, Don't Panic by Nim Teasdale. And um, you see it's in a uh, gradient hand spun lace y weight yarn. Uh, the fiber I got from an interlacements grab bag. And I am in, I'm adding parts of another pattern of hers called Evoluta. And so that's about where I am right now. Not going to talk too much more about that since it is the exact same as it was last time you saw it. So, next, where are my socks at? One moment, please. All right, hello. Uh, so in my Fresh Out of Fucks bag, we've got my Spring Blossom Socks by Susanna Vet Suzanne Vetterkind. So um, this one is the one I had more of last time, done, mo done more last time. I've got a lot of... Are you destroying some fiber down there? 
Are you proud of yourself? Oh yeah, now it's all stuck in your claws. <laughs> so this is the Spring Blossom Sock. Um, yeah, just got more of the foot. And this one saw a little bit more love as well. Almost done with the color work on this guy. So if we hold them up together, whoop. You see, I'm almost done. I, I almost um, sat down and tried to fi finish out this color work before the podcast, but life got in the way. So the yarns on this one, the main color is, uh, the main yarn is Rico Superba Premium Four Ply Superwash, all of the exciting words. Um, and it is in light brown. And then the uh, gradient yarn is my hand spun uh, from Spotted Circus in the color Vineyard, um, which is an alpaca silk blend. And then the heel is from uh, Fiber, no, River's Edge Fiber Arts, and it is their Donegal Fingering in Thistledown. So, yep, these are just my out in the world project. <laughs> And I have not spent that much time out in the world, so <laughs> it has not got that much love. Um, all right, so uh, next one is my necklace top by Nayama Ido. So this one, when you last saw it, um, I was just about here. Um, but now I have the full top done or front done. So if you see, I can stand up for you. It's going to be about the same length as this guy. And yeah. Oh, I love the way that looks on camera. That makes me happy. All right. So, yep. Um, this top is a lace weight uh, tank. And the yarn that I'm using is uh, Luminance Knit Picks Luminance Lace. Um, and this is the color Dedication. Um, and this pattern did not have the beading, but I added it um, because it was called the necklace top and I just thought it would be a nice little addition. Oh, yeah. And it almost kind of looks like a little owl face. Ooh, ooh, I am liking that. Okay, so what else do I have to say about this? I am, I did not get gauge. Um, I think that their lace yarn was a little closer to a light fingering. So I, you can see this is already pretty airy and see-through. Um, so I am knitting the size uh, 52 inch bust but with my gauge it should end up to be about a 48. Um, so yeah so I'm right I'm just past the back right now and uh, this will this has this open back um, in the the back of how'd you get a knitting needle on you? Uh, the back is open so um, it should go pretty quick from here on out, but it's got some complicated uh, cables right at the upper back. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to keep working on that. So I want to wear it. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. So the last knitting work in progress is my Summer Sorrel. This is, pro out of my knitting projects, I think this has gotten the most love. It doesn't really necessarily look like it. Oh, tangles, tangles. Um, but yeah, this is what I've been working on on the couch at nights. Oh, come on. Where, what are you doing? What are you doing? All right. So, uh, when I last saw you, I think I was about here. Um, I am now, this is also, it's a very small needle, or very small circumference of needles, so a little bit hard to spread out, but if I can, oh, there we go, that's actually not that bad. So you'll see um, I've gotten a bunch of the dip stitches done. Um, I'm just to the point where the uh, half of the dip stitches finish out. I don't know if you can see no it's a little too hard to see it's like right right there at the bottom but uh, essentially the way the pattern goes is half of them stop and half of them keep going down for another two or so repeats um, and then we split for sleeves so I'm almost there I'm so close I'm so excited um, once I split for the sleeves it's gonna be stuck in it 
um, for the rest of time until I finish, um, which will be both exciting and boring at the same time. And yeah, so I don't know if I said the name of that pattern, that is the Summer Sorrel by Woolen Pine. And the yarn, I'll hold it up while I talk about it, is uh, Space Cadet Maya, which is an 80% bamboo, 20% uh, superwash merino yarn. Um, and I, this yarn weirds me out a little. I mean, I love the way it feels in the finished uh, garment. Well, it's not finished, but you know, the fabric it's making. But as I work with it, it dries my hands out so bad. And I'm not a dry person. Um, I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel like I have newspaper hands. So super weird, um, but I think it's going to be a really nice fabric to wear. I think it's going to be like really w wicking, water wicking. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, we'll see. Um, but, but I am very excited about the fabric it's making and about the way the colors are working up. Um, when I switch into the stockinette, I'm going to start alternating skeins. Um, just because it's way too much work to do while I'm doing the, the dip stitches and uh, yeah it's it's not it hasn't been bothering me the way that it's um, undulating and pooling so the last uh, work in progress that I've got going right now is on my loom and I didn't even tell you anything about my loom uh, last time it is a mighty wolf loom which is the the big boy of the wolf uh, series and uh, it's shacked, shacked Mighty Wolf. Um, and they make the baby wolf and the some other kind of wolf. Um, but it is a 36 inch wide, or 48? 36? 30, 36, seems right. Um, I will put it on the screen. Uh, <laughs> so it is, uh, and I am weaving, uh, a M's and W pattern for a, uh, a dress. Um, it is going to be the Ava sundress, which I will pop a picture in right here like I did last time. Um, I, tale of woe, I guess. Um, I got lazy. So it took me three days to warp up this project, which is the longest a project has ever taken me. So I got a little lazy near the end and I started to wind on the last maybe mm, half yard of warp without dividers, thinking I had done all the work till then, not realizing this is the important part where if you fuck up the tension now, it's messed up for the entire project. So, um, so yeah, I've been having some tension problems. So, uh, the back of my loom looks like a Christmas tree with all the things hanging off of it, but, but we're get we're, we're, we're rolling along. It's going. I had a thought of finishing the panel that I was working on, maybe cutting the project off and retying it on. Um, I don't want to do that. Sounds miserable. So I think I'm just going to keep going. Um, I've had some broken threads. I've been able to fix them. Some of them uh, you can't even tell, so I'm not worrying about them. But anyway, um, the yarn is Hobie uh, Black Friday from 2020 and it is the color eight. Um, and I uh, held two, I had two cakes and I held two strands, which is actually made up of like eight individual strands. Um, held them, warped them together for my, I think it's like their 20, 28 uh, inch wide warp. It's pretty wide. Um, and I will insert some footage of me weaving either here or at the beginning or the end. We'll see how I feel like when I'm editing. Um, but yeah, it basically looks the same. Um, it's gonna look the same until it's over, um, but it's fun. I've been enjoying it. Uh, lost my mojo on it a little bit when the the yarns or the the warp started um giving me grief but uh, i think i've got it all set now and so back into that rhythm um so that's all my whips oh geez we're almost at an hour okay i'm almost done so uh what do i have to tell last things 
Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit of non-fiber stuff. Um, so, I want to take a drink. My partner and I are um, part-time board game developers. So we have a company called One Method Monkey, and we have released two board games, and we are working on our third and possibly final one. Um, and it is called Kitty Combs. So for this one, for our past board games, we've had a lot of the, we've had all of the games uh, shipped or produced, uh, printed, put together, assembled, and shipped to us in China um, with the state of the world the way it is right now and shipping being wildly expensive and unpredictable we decided this time to produce in-house mostly um so we have kind of piecemealed uh got a box printed from there got some uh board game or the the rule books printed from here and you know uh got the cards printed from here but one of the things that is actually pretty exciting is that we are 3d printing our own pieces and so the game is about being uh cats um, in a dungeon, um, and you are trying to beat up <clears throat> some, uh, enemies, take their loot, and get it, get out of the, <laughs> get out of the dungeon before, um, some of the enemies get to you. So, um, I does well, let's start with the cats. So, here are, <laughs> I've been 3D printing up a storm. So, my 3D printer sits right here. It is an any cubic uh, viper. Uh, it is dope. It's great. Love it. Um, so this is enough cat heads for 100 copies of our game, and I'm going to show you some of them up close. Um, I designed these in Tinkercad. Um, bloop, bloop, bloop. So these are our little kitties. If I hold it here long enough, I'm sure it will focus. Or maybe not. I'll hold it back a little bit. Anyway, so those are cats. Um, and then this is one of the enemies. This is the dog. I did not design this. This one we licensed from someone on uh, Thingiverse. And one of the things I really like about this is that the the tail and the head, they do a little waggy. So that's cool. Um, and the last piece that I have to print is a snake. So um, that one I am also designing. Um, and Tinkercad wasn't cutting it, so I've been teaching myself Blender. And boy, is that a program. Anyway, yep, yeah, so that was a little bit of life stuff, a little bit of yarn, uh, non-yarn crafts. So I've got a few acquisitions, and then I will um, let you roll on out. But I made an order from Hobie, and it came in, and I got a bunch of weird yarns. So um, I have a friend who wants to crochet a sun hat, a raffia sun hat. So she bought some of this and um, I couldn't be left out. So I also got some. So this is Hobie Raffella. Um, and this is a paper raffia yarn. And this is in the color eggplant. I got two of these little guys. So I'm not sure that this is going to be enough. Um, now that I think about it and this is an uh, discontinued yarn. So, oops, we'll see. Um, the, uh, the pattern I was looking at was using a different type of raffia, and I think I just misread the yardage. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is, I mean, this is 100 grams each, and it's 135 meters, so together it's about... 
270 meters. What is that, like 280 yards or so? Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I didn't stop there with the weird yarns. Um, I decided to grab um, these tape ribbon yarns. Um, so we've got, ooh, your ball band just fell off. You're a little naked. Okay, so I got these World of Yarn Java. So this is a tape yarn. And these are big, big skeins. This is 250 grams, 136 yards each, and it is made of cotton, polyamide, and viscose. So um, I keep seeing these like patterns for, I'm, I'm really feeling like brim tats right now. Like, so I saw a pattern for like a fedora style hat. So I'm gonna try that with this. Um, and then in this kind of the same vein, I picked up this um, ribbon, Ho Hobie ribbon jumbo. And this, that color was, um, oh shit, uh, charcoal melange. And this is mint. Um, so this is a super jumbo. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a hat or if this is going to be some kind of uh, home project, uh, but it just seemed fun. I really like a ribbon yarn. They're weird. Um, so I wanted some weird yarns, so I bought it. Speaking of weird yarns, boop, boop, boop. I got these little guys. Whee! Aren't these fun? Okay, so these are um, Hobie Paulina, and this is 100% paper yarn. Um, so, uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. I'm thinking like a crochet bag or something. Um, but these are 50 gram, uh, about 90 meters, 100% paper. Um, I think it's about a DK. I, it's hard to like say, like a lot of these weren't listed with a weight because they're just so weird. So, um, so we'll see. Um, so that's all the yarn stuff. And then the last thing... I got is this big boy crochet hook because I thought I may need it for the big boy yarn. Um, this is a pea sized hook <laughs> um, and this is from Twin Birch. Um, I have used their um, knitting needles before uh, but this is the first uh, crochet hook I've gotten from them. One of the things I really liked is that they put the name of the store that I got this from. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But it says Craft Habit right in there. Right by the size. Um, so yeah, and that's where I got it. Um, so yeah. Um, whew. I am tuckered. So uh, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I will be back in a fortnight to bring you more yarny goodness um if you will miss me um until that time you can follow me on instagram where i am crayon, crayon disaster knits or on ravelry or textilia where i am crayon disaster and until next time uh enjoy all your soft fluffy things and uh yeah bye